So, good afternoon everyone. Today we will be solving an example on flexure design of T-beams. We already solved uh, an example on designing rectangular sections. So in this example we have a T-section. Uh, we should design it to resist an ultimate moment of 320 kilonewtons meters. And the material properties are we have the compressive strength of concrete, which is F prime C, equals to 21 MPa, and the yield strength of steel rebars equals to 420 MPa. And these are the dimensions of the T section. So, as a first step, we usually make some assumptions to be checked later at the end of the problem. First of all, I will assume that D, which is the effective depth for beams with single layer of reinforcement, we can say that it's equal to H minus 65, but this to be checked later on, that this number is uh, safe and conservative, and the real D is uh, greater than the assumed one. So here D will be equal to 635 millimeters. This is the first assumption. The second assumption is that the neutral axis passes through the flange of the beam. Because when you're assuming that A is less than T flange, or the, let's go back to the last slide, or the neutral axis is passing through this flange, we mean that uh, the effective width of beam in the compression zone will be 1,000 Actually, this is 1,200 and not 1,500. I'll correct it and I'll upload the correct file. This is 1,200 millimeters. So this will be BF, B flange, will be the effective width of the beam. However, if the neutral axis uh, is passing through the web, here I have to divide this zone into two areas and there is different procedure. Usually, most of the T sections uh since the depth is uh, high somehow uh, the neutral axis will pass in most of the cases in the flange so we have to assume it and to check it at the end of the problem so we will assume that a is less than t flange so we will design the beam as rectangular section with width equal to 1200 millimeters so step number one, um, definitely I, I, I forgot to mention that uh, also we have a third assumption, which is phi. We will assume that the section is ductile and it's tension controlled section. So the, the phi will be equal to, phi factor will be equal to 0 0.9 and also this assumption to be checked. So we, so we have three assumptions to be checked. First of all, we determine the uh, Rn factor, which is equal to m ultimate over phi bd squared. Pay attention that B here is 1,200 since we already assumed that. So direct application, we have the moment. Also pay attention to transfer the unit here from kilo newton meter to newton millimeters to be consistent in units. So this is the, the moment term. This is phi B D square. Then as we did last time, rho is equal. We have a formula that relates F prime C, F yield, and Rn to rho. So I have Rn here, F prime C is 21, F yield is 420, so rho will be equal based on this equation to 0 0.00178. This is the ratio of reinforcement. So in order to transfer the ratio of reinforcement into area of steel, I have to multiply it by the effective area which is the B, the width, times the effective depth, which is D. Also pay attention that B is 1,200 and it's not 300. Many students make such mistakes by considering B the 300 term. So they will say that the AS is too small and um, the answer will be wrong. So AS is equal to rho times B times D. Rho, um, I think here rho should be 0 0.00178. Also, I'll correct it in the uh, PDF version of this file. So rho 
is 0 0.00178 times 1,200 times uh, 635. The answer will be 1,362 millimeters square. Uh, we will check AS minimum in a later step, but it will be greater than AS minimum. So we will use 3, 5, 25 millimeters. So the actual AS will be 1,470 millimeters square. So here we determined the area or the required area of reinforcement for this T section. Now we have to check our assumptions. So the first assumption is that A is less than H flange, or in other words, uh, the neutral axis passes through the flange. Okay, so we see that we say that C is equal to T, C force equal to T force, force in compression equal to force in tension. From this equation, we can determine A, which is ASF yield over 0.85 F prime C times V. This is a routine, routine step. So this would be equal to direct application, the AS, F yield, 0.85, F prime C, and B. Also here, B should be to 1,200. So the value of A will be, will be much less than uh, 100, which is the depth of the flange, the thickness of the flange. So it's 23.1 depth of flange is 100 so since it's less the assumption is okay from a I can determine C which is the depth of a neutral axis the actual depth a is the depth of the stress block C is the actual depth of a neutral axis so we divide a by beta 1 and we mentioned last time that beta 1 is equal to 0 0.85 for compressive strength less than 28 MPa so C will be equal to around 27 millimeters. And from C and D, I can determine the stress at steel level, which is also from last time, D minus C over C from compatibility of strains, times 0 0.003, which is the ultimate strain in concrete in compression. Direct substitution, we can see that the strain and steel level is much more greater than 0 0.005, which is the limit for using phi as 0 0.9. So here we check two assumptions. The first one, which is A less than H flange, and the second one, uh, the validity of using phi as 0 0.9. Then, we have to check for AS minimum, which is the minimum ratio of C reinforcement. As per ACI code, we have two formulas. The first one is 0 0.25 radical F prime C over F yield times BD. This is raw minimum, this term, times BD will give me AS minimum. Similarly, the second term is 1.4 over F yield. This is raw minimum, and by multiplying it with B times D, I get AS minimum. We choose the larger value, which is 666.8 approximately millimeter square. This controls, but it's still less than AS, so I'm on the safe side. This for AS minimum. And finally, the check for D. I assume D at the beginning of the problem as 635 millimeters. I have to determine the actual D. To make sure that it's greater than uh, the assumed D. So actual D is equal to 700 minus clear cover. We assumed it 40 from the code. Minus one stir up DS. We use like, for example, 10 millimeter diameter stir ups as shear reinforcement. Minus half flexure rebar. We use 25. So minus 25 over 2. This answer will be equal to 637 millimeters. It's still greater than 635, so we are in the same and the safe side. Okay? This is for check for D. And that's it for our section. So you can see that we are following 
uh, the same steps in solving any design problem which is based on first assuming uh, some of the unknowns sometimes and then after determining them we recheck that our assumption is correct this is for the t section design example i hope that this example was clear in case you have any question kindly don't hesitate to contact me via email stay safe study well wassalamu alaikum